If you watched last week's video, and even if you didn't, as long as you are not completely asleep, you are well aware at this point that privacy is under attack. And that is why in today's video, I'm excited to take a peek at Jam, which is the web UI for JoinMarket, a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace for conducting collaborative Bitcoin transactions. Let's jump in. Welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur, Bitcoin pleb, an all around raging capitalist. And I'm excited to do today's video. Really, I probably should be waiting a little bit longer because of just how early stages this project is, but I couldn't resist myself. And so today is gonna to be more of a preview as opposed to a full-blown tutorial. I'll definitely come back and do additional videos as a follow-up, both as some of the functionality kind of solidifies more fully and as some of the kind of more advanced features get rolled out. So I wanted to make that disclaimer for today, but I still think this is a really fascinating take on coin joins, which are collaborative Bitcoin transactions intended to add privacy and fungibility to Bitcoin. And so today we're gonna to start by talking about the difference between join market, which has been around for quite some time since 2015. Only recently has there been a major effort to revamp the UI and build a web-based UI for a more average individual that doesn't require working with Python scripts and things like that. And so we'll talk about join markets approach versus other solutions such as Samurai Wallet, Whirlpool, Wasabi Wallet, et cetera. Uh, and we'll take a preview of what we can into the tool. I really do think this is exciting stuff, so you are not gonna wanna miss a thing. For those returning to the channel, welcome back, my friends, as always. It is a pleasure to have you. And for those new to the channel, I welcome you as well. If you like this type of content, I invite you to consider subscribing and join us in our growing merry gang in cyberspace. I cover all manner of Bitcoin related content, including a whole slew of tutorials on how to acquire Bitcoin, secure Bitcoin, privacy best practices, new tools such as today. With all that out of the way though, let's go ahead and jump into the meat for today. And I wanna first start with an overview conceptually of what Join Market is, what's the motivation here, and then we will get further into things. All right, so starting at the very highest level, like what is the motivation here? It is quite simple. It is that you have a right to privacy, right? None of these videos I do on privacy related tools or themes are intended to encourage illicit activity of any kind. They are simply to make you aware of the tools you have at your disposal because your financial privacy is your business. It is no one else's business what money you have, what you do with your money. And there's an even stronger argument to that, that privacy is a real requirement for true freedom. And so many of you watching this may be familiar with the concept of coin join transactions. Coin join transaction is nothing more than a collaborative transaction where multiple individuals are participating in order to help add privacy to the transaction. And so the analogy to use here is imagine I was outside in the street and you're looking out your apartment building and you can see me there in the street, right? Like I'm pretty easy to spot. It's just this one guy. But what if I had a bunch of friends join me, right? Now it may get a little bit more difficult to kind of spot me in the crowd. And what if in addition to surrounding myself with all these individuals, we also started wearing a, the exact same outfit and clothing. Now it starts to get even harder to kind of pick me out of the crowd. And especially if we then all go our separate ways, it becomes very hard for someone trying to surveil all of us to figure out, well, wait a second, is that him or is that him or is that him? But in essence, carrying forth that analogy we just discussed, the idea is that me and multiple other participants are all coming together with the exact same size UTXO uh, or essentially you know, inputs into a transaction. And the go forward ownership of those different UTXOs is obfuscated by this collaborative transaction. And if you do that again and again and again and again, you're making it very difficult for chain surveillance firms to perform their usual analysis. You're basically creating additional doubt with each additional incremental coin join transaction to where a chain surveillance firm is gonna say, I think this output belongs to this input, but I'm not actually sure. It's probabilistically, I have, you know, I'm not sure. That is what is happening. Now, what is not happening is this does not erase the past. 
So a lot of people ask, oh, well, like, you know, if I go and buy some Bitcoin on Coinbase and then I, you know, do some coin join transactions, like, does that remove the fact that I bought it on Coinbase? No, right? The answer is absolutely not. Coinbase will forever know that you bought that Bitcoin forever, right? And so any centralized exchange is, of course, going to share that information with any regulatory authority, you know, that, that kind of asks them. So I've done a lot of videos on how to acquire non-KYC in the first place using tools like RoboSats or BISC or even certain Bitcoin ATMs. Uh, so again, check out some of those videos that I will link in the description down below. Importantly, there are two main categories of CoinJoin solutions in the market today. There are solutions that use a centralized coordinating server. Now, this shouldn't be mistaken for a custodial solution. You still fully own your keys uh, throughout this whole process. But this includes examples like Samurai Wallet's Whirlpool uh, CoinJoin implementation, as well as Wasabi Wallet. I've done videos on all of that uh, as well. So again, check those out. I will leave those links in the description down below. Where Join Market, I think, is quite interesting is that it takes a more peer-to-peer -peer approach. So instead of this, you know, kind of central server that is coordinating these various participants into a collaborative transaction, Join Market is simply facilitating individuals to kind of come together on their own, which I think is quite interesting. And it also even adds a new incentive for CoinJoin. So the way this structurally works is there are what are called makers. So these are individuals or, you know, in many cases, kind of bot scripts that run on Join Market that will participate with you in a collaborative transaction. And these makers who are kind of making the offer, who are enabling you as the user to come in and do this, will earn a small fee for their services. On the other side, the taker, right, is you coming in, you wanna do a collaborative transaction, you are going to pay a small fee to the makers that you're collaborating with. And this is very similar, right? You pay a, you pay a fee either way. You pay a fee either to uh, you know, Whirlpool in the case of that, or you pay a fee. But like in light of some of what we've just observed in terms of the Tornado Cash uh, kind of sanctions and crackdowns, like the, the mere term mixing tool, I think will become more and more sort of ominous for folks. And so I really do like Join Market's approach, which is just, this is a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace essentially of individuals coming together to perform collaborative transactions with what is code, which is language, which is speech. So pretty cool, the kind of distinct approach that Join Market has taken. And again, I think with this revamped UI, we're gonna see this really continue to grow. Now, as you will see, we definitely run into some issues with this. So I do wanna underscore how early this is. This is typically earlier than I would usually do any sort of coverage for a new tool. But I just think this is such an important topic to be building awareness on that I'm gonna go ahead with it anyway. I'll definitely go through the steps that I can. Uh, there will be some issues and roadblocks we run into that I'll go through and kind of explain. But I think this will still be very instructive and I'll definitely do a follow-up video with some of the more advanced features as they get rolled out uh, and a little bit more fully baked. So it goes without saying, if you wanna kind of test this out yourself, you know, don't do so with any sats that you wouldn't be afraid to lose. You know, Don't put a lot in this uh, at this very early stage. And you'll see when we get into it that it provides that type of kind of consistent reminder as well. So with all that, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look. All right, so let's jump into it. I am on the Join Market Web UI, i.e. Jam sort of GitHub page here, which has a nice little readme. Uh, it gives a overview of what this is, as well as the available integrations, as you can see. So there's integrations with Raspi Blitz, uh, as well as Umbral and Citadel as well. Today, I'm gonna be going through Umbral, but beyond the initialization process within any of these systems, the interface should, of course, look uh, the same. If you don't have one of these systems, you can run it locally. Uh, there's a link down here. Again, I will put this link, of course, in the description down below, but it gives you some context on how you can run Jam uh, the web UI locally and connect it to a remote join market instance. And again, all of this is a massive leap forward. I mean, before it was basically just kind of Python scripts uh, that you would have to interact with in order to do any of this. So let's come over to my Umbral. Uh, I have yet to uh, update to Umbral 0.5, so I'm very uh, lazy in that regard, but that's okay. 
let's come down to the App Store and we are looking for Jam. And there it is. So a user-friendly UI for Join Market gives a quick overview. Again, this is still very early, uh, but let's go ahead and install it. All right, so we've got it installed. And as with, I think, all Umbral apps uh, these days, you have the kind of generated default app password that is in here. So I'll go ahead and get that on my uh, clipboard. So let's go ahead and open it. And we'll put in the username and the password. So we've got Jam, a friendly UI for Join Market. Your wallet, your coins, 100% open source and open design. Uh, there's a link here if you want to leave you know feedback or you know find ways to contribute etc and it indeed gives us that warning once again it is in an alpha stage so use with some caution so let's use get started so we can kind of see uh presumably a little intro here welcome to jam for join market join market is a privacy focused software solution that aims to improve the confidentiality and privacy of your bitcoin transactions facilitates the creation of collaborative transactions through a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. Very cool. Collaborative transactions to have stronger privacy guarantees in the open and transparent world of Bitcoin. Special kinds of transactions have to be created. We know that. And you are in control. It's fully non-custodial, meaning you always have full control over your funds. This basically uses kind of time-locked contracts to make sure that transactions are atomic, meaning they either succeed or they fail and your funds are secure at all times. And this is the big differentiator, right? Like, again, you're always in control of your keys when using things like Whirlpool, but this is a purely peer-to-peer -peer system. Any third parties are fully eliminated. Privacy for all. Let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is create a wallet. So we'll go ahead and hit create new wallet. Uh, we'll go ahead and just call this something like demo. I'll give this a password. And so in typical fashion, we have got ourselves a seed phrase. Uh, we've got 12 words here. So I'm going to go ahead and write this down and then we will go ahead and proceed. All right, by default, it's hidden all the kind of balance information and we'll get to this later, but let's go ahead and get some funds. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit deposit and I've got a handy address that I will simply copy. I'm actually just gonna come over to my umbral and send it out of my coin wallet here. All right, so let's come down, we'll withdraw. Let's do 100,000 sats. Let's go ahead and uh, put our address in and we're willing to get this going quickly. So let's go ahead and withdraw. There we go, perfect. And so let's give this a moment to confirm and we will be right back. All right, so we have got our 100,000 sats that has been confirmed on the Bitcoin blockchain. And you can see that this has been mapped to this sort of, uh, they call it privacy level in Jam. This is a pretty confusing topic actually. What this actually represents are what are called mix depths. And so you can almost think of a mix depth as, um, you know, recall that in hierarchical deterministic wallets, you have sort of different accounts, right, that you can have funds uh, within. And so you can basically have funds at different, quote, depths. Why this is important is that UTXOs from one mix depth are never used together or mixed together with funds from other mix depths. And this is obviously to improve privacy, but what I think is tricky, and I can even see in one of the team, uh, I appreciate that they kind of published their kind of team discussions on their GitHub, uh, I can see this is from probably a couple months back that, you know, they're they're kind of wrestling with this, right? It's mixed depth is currently represented as these privacy levels, which suggests that like, oh, obviously five is better than one, when that's not actually true. Different mixed depths are not necessarily associated with, you know, stronger privacy guarantees, for example. And so I do know that they're looking at other ways to kind of analogize this. It's clear that they're trying to abstract that away for kind of the more casual user. Uh, it looks like they're considering jars as different as kind of a metaphor for this. Uh, but just be aware that this is not necessarily privacy guarantee like one to five, uh, but rather different mix depths at which your funds can be located. And that is really just a separation mechanism to ensure that they don't get sort of mixed together. Now, let's explore some of the different pieces here. So there is this earn tab. I don't think this is actually functional just yet, but it is a really interesting concept. And so this is the interface that would allow you to become a maker, i.e. making your Bitcoin available for others uh, to engage in these collaborative transactions. I love that they, you know, they put in kind of default settings uh, often throughout the interface, which is nice. 
And so this is basically saying 0.03% uh, of the funds that you're helping to, you know, coin join essentially uh, would would go to you sort of as a as a yield. So it's a really interesting way to, you know, earn a bit of yield on your Bitcoin. So pretty cool stuff. You technically can hit this start button uh, and it says, you know, service is starting and then it just kind of has this check mark. And you're like, okay, you know, I guess it's running. It says service is running, but I am not actually sure if that is true. So I think this is not uh, kind of fully built and perhaps that is indicative uh, by this kind of, you know, mark at the top. So we'll go ahead and hit stop here. But that is really, really cool. I'm excited to see this get built out. But for now, you know, we can be a taker. So we are looking to engage in a collaborative transaction. And so we can do that by coming over to the send tab. I also went ahead and actually created a second wallet uh, within Jam. You can do that by coming to this icon in the top right, which basically zooms you out. You can see I've created a demo to wallet uh, that I've grabbed an address from uh, for purposes of this send that we're about to do. And you can see that, you know, it's basically you have one active at a time, so you can lock this and then uh, unlock the other with your password. Uh, so just a quick note uh, of what I did there. But let's come over to the send tab and let's go ahead and paste in the address from the other wallet that I have created. And you will uh, you will see the kind of privacy level concept being mentioned here. So privacy level zero. Again, these ma these really are mixed depths. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they kind of uh, square that and make that genuine and yet still very kind of understandable interpretation for the user. Of course, we only have our UTXOs at this particular uh, kind of level. And so that is fine. And so let's send a partial amount. Let's send 50,000 sats. And let's toggle on the collaborative transaction. So I guess you can send just normal transactions, but anticipate, you know, most, most folks would want to be able to come in and uh, send this as a more collaborative transaction. I think one little bug I'm noticing is that sometimes it has this kind of breakdown of, uh, or like an explanation of what to expect with fees. Uh, sometimes it's not, so maybe that's, maybe that's a me thing. But in any case, once again, we have this nice default uh, best practice. You definitely want eight or more quote collaborators. So these are going way back to the analogy of me in the street, this would be the number of other individuals that are kind of helping surround me uh, to, to add that privacy to this transaction. So let's go ahead and hit send. And it says collaborative transaction has started. Collaborative transaction is currently in progress. And I also see this kind of icon in the top right. Now I'm not actually sure if this is fully functional just yet. I was doing a little bit of tinkering prior to shooting this video, but let's see what happens. And even if this doesn't go, uh, I am still probably gonna go ahead and publish this because I think the awareness is important enough. Uh, and I'll definitely do kind of follow up videos with some of the more uh, advanced features and things like earn once that gets built out. So let's give this a moment and see if anything interesting happens uh, and we'll be right back. So indeed, we are gonna kind of pause things here. I did notice some WebSocket errors in my browser console, but as a non-dev, you know, it's kind of like I've, I've sort of hit the wall on this one. So it could easily be a me thing in relation to my node connectivity. Suffice to say, just going back to kind of all the disclaimers throughout, you know, this is obviously still early days. So do not put more in that you would be willing to lose. I was able, however, to conduct a normal send uh, out of the wallet, although there was quite a large chunk of fees taken, so that is a little bit unusual as well. But with all of that, let's go ahead and conclude today's video. All right, so maybe it was never about the collaborative transactions and rather about the friends we made along the way. But YOLO, sometimes you don't quite get there, but I am putting this video out nonetheless, and I'll definitely do a follow-up video on some of the more advanced features and as things get a little bit more fully baked. So be sure that you are subscribed if you aren't already. But I'm curious to hear, based on at least what you saw today, what are your thoughts? Do you think Join Market is a great solution? Do you like the updated UI? Let me know in the comments down below. But I hope you found this at least valuable and insightful. If you did, you already know what to do. Give this video a like. Share it around with those you think are interested in these types of topics. That definitely helps the algorithm these days. But for now, my friends, we'll go ahead and leave this video here. As a reminder, every sat counts. And until next time, I'll see you then.